Shabbat Shalom. Um, welcome back after the break. Good to see you all. Thank you. And um, yeah, we haven't had a meeting for weeks now. It's probably over a month, I believe. So I hope you didn't forget the noon. So I've got a few slides at the back um, just to recap on some of the uh, gems from the noon. It's linking to the summer. But before we start, let's just open up in prayer. Thank you, Father, that we can come together in your name. And thank you that we can start this year with this wonderful study, studying your word and your wisdom, uh, continuing with the alphabet. Father, I just ask that you be with us tonight and you help us to understand your wisdom, your truth, and the things behind the scenes and how they work so we can have a better understanding of who you are and how things work from where you are from. And Father, reveal yourself to you in a very special way tonight. Work through me and also work in the people's hearts uh, so that your truth can be spoken into their hearts to renew them and give them life. I ask this all in the mighty name for Shua Messiah. Amen. All right, so we are starting uh, again with the Aleph Bet tonight. So we finished letter Nun last year. So this is the first study for 2019, uh, continuing with the letter Samech, which is the 15th letter. So you can see there, we still have, after tonight, we've got seven more to go, and then we um, completed the Aleph Bet. So I'm actually very excited to start with the Iron. Um, I spent three weeks um, studying the Samech, so there was a few pages added this week. Uh, the study was complete last week, and uh, so uh, I hope it's not too much. So uh, let's continue. Uh, my presentation. There you go. All right, just to summarize, these are the topics, main topics um, that we're going to touch on, and all of these are basically from um, the symbolism or from the meaning afterwards, some have found scripture or in a connection to that. So the, the first uh, one we're going to look at is just the basic meaning of Samech, and Samech means to support or to sustain. Um, Samech is also connected to signs and symbolism, and that's a very important concept. Um, if we do not understand the symbolism in Scripture, we will not have the ability to accurately interpret the Scripture. So that is a very crucial for us to understand the symbolism, not only found in the Hebrew letters, but also found within the stories and the word pictures and all the symbols and signs um, within scripture, because they're all connected and they all have a spiritual backdrop to them and they connect to something else that will enhance or highlight um, something about Yahweh or something about his wisdom or something about his word. So, Samech basically represents the concept of symbolism, and we're going to look at that. Um, the next one is that Samech is the letter that actually describes the concept of a Messiah and how that come, came to be. So, there's two specific scriptures where the word Samech, the Samech Mem Kaf, if you write it out, is found and those two scriptures in relation to one another really highlights um, the work of Messiah. So that was pretty exciting to, 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 to stumble upon. Um, the next one is a bit awkward or not really expecting to see that because Samech is also symbolizing a serpent or the concept of a serpent and also the negative or the uh, bad connotation to a serpent which comes from other religions are also captured within the Samech but the truth behind that is still um, evident within scripture and it's basically uh, a copy from what Yahweh intended that was 
then uh, borrowed by the other religions as well. Um, the other um, interesting thing about Samech is that it symbolizes a pillar. So we're going to look at that. And in relation to that, it also is connected to faith. Um, then Samech is also related to the word of Yahweh through the letter Mem. Because the Samech is the letter that looks very similar to the Mem Sufit, the Mem, which is the enclosed one. Then Samech represents a circle or cycles. And as you can see, the Samech looks like a circle. And any circle is an indication of cycles. So that is a fundamental truth or a spiritual truth that is um, very, very important for us to understand when it comes to eternal life or time or how Yahweh works. And then the last one is basically conclusion of, of, of all of this is that Samech represents a spiritual force or spiritual energy. Now we know that Mem is substance like um, the word that you take and you um, take that into your life and it produces something. But Samech is the spiritual energy that brings the word to you. So it's like a a means to 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 reach out to man and that's that force that comes from Yahweh into the physical to us in the form of that spiritual energy energy um, symbolized by the summer so there's a very interesting few concepts that's also linked to science and I think that's why the Jews um, won so many Nobel prizes and are very great um, scientists because they understand the Hebrew and basically science and Hebrew are reflecting on one another because it's Yahweh's creation. Okay, Samech, as I said, is a 15th letter. Now looking at the number 15, it's made up from adding 10 plus 5. Letter 10 is a Yod and 5 is a Hay. And 10 represents the letter Yod. And five represents the hay, and if you combine the two, it makes the word Yah, which is a short form of Yahweh. So Samech is directly in contact with Yahweh. So it's coming from him. Um, Samech is also the number 60. If you just look at the Hebrew, um, it represents the number 60, which is six times ten. Now six is a vav, which represents man. And 10 is the letter Yod, which represents Yahweh's spirit or his invisible hand. And it's also the symbol of the hand on the head, which relates to anointing. And anointing is basically what the concept of Masiach is, the anointed one. So Vav and Yod connected to each other is basically an anointed man or what we know as the Messiah. And we as little anointed ones, we are Christians because he is the Christ, he's the, the main anointed one, and we are little anointed ones, and together collectively we represent him. So that is also um, uh, encapsulated within the meaning of the Samech. And then just something interesting in Numbers 6 23 to 27, the number of words that make up the ironic blessing counts up to 60 as well and that links Samech to Yahweh's blessings which is in line with the meaning of Samech which is to support and sustain us so um, those are a few gems coming from the um, numbers associated with Samech now looking at the alphabet on the top there you'll see that the previous letter was the letter Nun and the next one is Samech and if you read them from right to left it makes the word, uh, I'm jumping a slide. It makes the word, no, I'm jumping a slide again, let me go back. Um, nas, that means flag, banner, sign, or something lifted up. And it's also a standard. Now, where this word nas is first found in scripture is in Numbers 21 8, when Moses created a serpent, which I instructed him to do. And it's called a fiery serpent that was placed on a pole as a sign. And when people looked upon the sign, they received healing 
and salvation. And those who didn't look upon the serpent, they died because the serpents um, bit them. So what is this symbolism all about? Now on face value, the simple interpretation is that that is a symbolic of Yeshua the Messiah, which took sin upon himself, hence the symbolism of the serpent. And when you look upon him, who um, carried all the sin of the world on his shoulders, um, you will receive healing and salvation. So that's on face value. But when you look at the Samech from um, the meaning of its function as a force or a cycle, it gives us a deeper meaning. And we're going to look at a bit later to that deeper symbolism within the same um, word, uh, historical picture. Now, um, Samech uh, is also, in this case, associated with a serpent. Now, a serpent, we also know, is the word uh, Nahash. And Nahash is translated as enchanter. Now, the enchanter is the uh, enemy who enchanted Eve for her to take the fruit and eat from the forbidden fruit, and hence the fallen nature of man and sin came into the world through the influence or the enchantment of the Nahash. So Nahash is basically the evil entity that describes the concept of Satan or Lucifer or the devil. Now in this case, Nahash is related to salvation and healing. So how does that work? Now from this previous study of the Nun, and I've got the last four slides, um, just as a reminder, is that the Nun also represented the two kinds of serpents. The first one was the Nahash, and that was when Moses threw down his staff, it became a Nahash. And when Aaron cast his staff in front of uh, the musicians of Pharaoh, it also becomes a serpent, but that was called a Tanin. And later on, Moses was referred to as the Levite called Tanin. And Tanin was also referred to as the big fish that was created on day five, which is translated as a whale. But the sages don't really believe it's a whale. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a large sea um, animal or creature. And connecting Moses the Levi to Tanin makes the word Leviathan, which is referred to in Job as a enormous powerful creature that Yahweh created. Now this Tanin is the force that absorbed or consumed the Nahash of Pharaoh's um, musicians. And that show us the link between the serpent, the evil serpent, the Nahash, and the connection to the Messiah who will defeat the Nahash as revealed through Tanin or the Levite Tanin um, because Yeshua was a prophet like Moses. And what confirms that is that the gematria of Nahash is 358, and that's also the gematria of Masiach. So the Masiach is the one that will consume the Nahash through that connection, through that gematria. And that's, that's why the Messiah is also symbolically expressed or signified as a serpent. And that serpent is related to the Samech in, in relation to the Nun. Now, what's also interesting about this concept is, is that the word Nas means sign, something lifted up in a standard or a banner. So that is something that you normally use to indicate a place or pinpoint something to show there's something important here or there's treasure here. You have to dig deeper or you need to indicate um, the borders of your inheritance so it's got significance in showing us something beyond that symbol or the, or the symbolism now what this word uh, really enhanced for me was the importance of symbolism within uh, the scripture now any symbol or any picture is something that communicates beyond language 
beyond culture and beyond time frame. So any culture within any time frame, speaking whatever language, will interpret the same picture in the same way. So symbolism is a universal means to communicate something to us. Now what's interesting about the letter Samech, when you look at the gematria of Samech, if you write out Samech Mem Kaf, it adds up to 120. And one of those words associated with that is the word Orion, or the constellation of Orion. So I was very fascinated about that because Orion is linked to the pyramids, is linked to Egypt, is linked to Pharaoh, to Moses, to deliverance, the sign of the serpent, and everything is interlinked to one another. Now I watched a documentary regarding Orion and the pyramids just to get a bit more insight. And what I learned from that is, is that the symbolism within the pyramid and the construction of the pyramid with all the, the ratios and uh, the shapes and uh, the numbers and the, uh, and, and the mathematics behind it is a universal code or language that goes beyond uh, time frames or cultures or language that carry a message, a hidden message with hidden treasures or hidden wisdom that we can interpret regardless of when we um, um, uh, discover this in our time frame or what language we speak of from which culture we are. So in the same way, the symbolism in scripture is a hidden language or a means to interpret Yahweh's wisdom. So that underlines the importance of the symbolism within scripture. Now, if you read Revelation, you'll see the importance of understanding the symbolism because that's the only way to interpret revelation if you understand the symbolism now we studying the hebrew aleph bet goes one level deep, level deeper in getting a fuller understanding of each and every letter and the wisdom connected to that that we can then apply to words or to to verses to passages to scriptures and link them to other um, signs like stories like Joseph or, or Moses, Aaron and her upholding a staff, or whatever picture or symbolic um, expression there might be to link these things together to give us an understanding of the word. So that's the premise of the wisdom that Yahweh wants to underline, I believe, in this study, is to focus on the importance of the symbolism because it's got that universal truth that cannot be defiled because even a child can understand it because it's just a picture. So that is the, the, the importance of the word Nas, which is the combination between the Nun and the Samech. So moving on, um, Samech means support or to be sustained. Now this connects to the word faith or Amuna because Amuna means um, support and pillar. Now, where the word Amuna is first found in scriptures in Exodus 17, where Aaron and her upheld Moses' arms when they were in battle against Amalek. Now, the symbolism that we see here has got the, the translation as support. Faith is basically supporting something and upholding it high above yourself. So that's the concept of faith. So if we say we have faith in Messiah, we uplift his name above every other name and we trust in him. And if someone asks us who can do this and who can do that, we will uplift someone with abilities to tell those people that this is the person that can do this. And in, in Yeshua's case, he is the only one who can save. So we uplift his name and that's the concept of faith now the symbolism with samech in relation to the support structure was something that really popped up to me and overlaying a few other uh, uh, some symbolic items um, found in scripture with that really opened up a lot of wisdom um, embedded in the scripture so one of the things that really stood out is when I looked at um, the concept of pillars and 
holding up the staff and the support the pillars provide in relation to the Samech and what the Samech look like. So then the pillar should be hollow if you look from the pillar from the top because that's the only way the Samech will have the same um, uh, look if it's a top view um, on that hollow pillar. And looking at nature, these structures are actually found within um, hurricanes, tornadoes, where a turning force with where the wind turn um, the clouds or the water into a spiral, producing a pillar with a hollow um, inside. And when you look at it from the top, it looks just like a samech. So now we get the concept of a pillar that looks like a samech, but you have to look at the pillar from the top. And the forces of nature, as I mentioned that Samech is a force, can form a pillar with a hollow center, just like a hurricane and a tornado as well. Now what's interesting is that a force like a tornado has got a force that can uplift something. And that is one of the meanings of the Samech and also of Amuna is to lift something up. So there's a turning force that turns around um, giving the shape to the pillar, but on the inside of that shape, there's a force that uplifts. So that gives us a spiritual insight into how can we be elevated spiritually. The only way to be elevated spiritually is if we engage with this turning force that is symbolized by this rotating pillar. And if you go through that force field into the center, there you will find the, the uplifting force. Now, when you are inside of a cyclone, and people told many stories about it to experience this, they said that the wind and the rain is in one direction, and then there's quiet. And then the rain and the wind is another direction because they the eye of the cyclone went over them so inside this force field there is peace or, or quiet or shalom now when you look at it from a spiritual point of view if you want to access the shalom you have to travel through the force field of this turning force that will strip away everything that is not part of you and then you enter into the peace and that's the same principle so when we want to enter Yahweh's peace, like the Holy of Holies, we have to go through this cleansing cycle, this turning force that will strip us from anything that is not of Yahweh. And when we enter that shalom, we will feel that lifting force that can elevate us. The same concept as a tornado, we can lift, lift things up. Now what's interesting about this concept, um, when I looked at this, there are different um, uh, forces in nature that has the same attribute. Now, one of those forces are an, an magnetic, a magnetic field. Now, we learned in school that a magnetic field, if you take a bar magnet, you have your force um, magnetic fields go around, and then the, 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 the bar magnet's in the middle, and you get north and south, and the magnetic field's basically the strongest in the middle with your fields going around. But there's more research being done in looking at what these fields look like. Now, a magnetic field, if you look at the bar magnet, is a vortex spinning field that spins out and then it goes around the outside and it connects to the vortex field on the inside and it spins through and then it repeats. So if it's a three dimensional model, it basically looks similar to an apple with the force field on the inside where the actual lifting field or that field that can lift something or move something sit. And it's a spinning force similar to a tornado or a cyclone. And the other thing is there, there was uh, research done and they developed a device where they create a vortex within a cylindrical tube where they blow the air in at an angle and as it spins, it's got two little valves where you can 
regulate the amount of air going um, out either way. And the outside air spinning heats up and the inside is a vortex where the air goes in the opposite direction. And when it comes out, it's freezing cold and actually forms ice on the pipe. And what you input is basically air at room temperature. And it separates the hot air and the cold air from within through the spinning forces in different directions. So we see this turning force in nature, you see it in science, and the concept of the Samech and the pillar effect is exactly the same. And to confirm that, we read in scripture about the two pillars which guided Israel through the wilderness. Now, the only way you can form a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire is to rotate the cloud or the water or to rotate the fire. Otherwise, it will be like a fire, you know, a blower blowing from the bottom or from the top, but it will flare out. It won't form a pillar unless it's rotating. And in the same way, when you have a tornado, specifically over a body of water, it will form a pillar of water. And I believe that, similar to what we find in nature, that the actual pillars of cloud and fire were like tornado pillars, turning forces, uh, containing the presence of Yahweh, protecting the people. And that's the other gem that I discovered when I saw this. I immediately thought again of the serpent on the pole. So, yes, there's a serpent and it's got symbolic value, but the way the serpent rot was rotated around the pole indicated this vortex or this turning force field that rotates down from the top to the bottom that has the ability to uplift. Now, when you look at the Samech from the top and a circle, it indicates a cycle. And if you want to take this and you want to extrapolate that over time and you take the cycle on its side, it will form like a turning spring-like uh, field where it cycles over time. And when you turn that up and it cycles down from the top in time down towards us, that's exactly what the serpent looked like. And these cycles... Now, through the Gematra, we'll see in, on, on uh, the number 120, the word Samech, through the Gematra of 120, share the word Moed, which is Moedim, which, is, which are the appointed times. Now, the appointed times are cycles through time, creating this spiraling um, uh, symbolic picture, which is similar to the serpent spiraling down. So when you look upon the serpent, you see the power of the Samech turning, which is the Moedim turning through time, indicating the work of Messiah through appointed times, because the spiral is now extrapolated through time. So from our point of view, we see a serpent spiraling down. From Yahweh's point of view, you look down, you see the Samech, just a circle like it's indicated here. So that was the the behind the scenes or the, the deeper meaning of the symbol of the serpent and this rotating force as uh, extrapolated and overlaid with the concept of a pillar and the turning forces um, seen in nature, as well as the link to um, the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud or the pillar of water. Now what confirms this, what, what is fascinating, if you look at Aaron and her now representing the two pillars, when you look at the name Aaron, now it's Aleph, Hei, Resh, Nun. Now, if you remove the letter Hei, you get the word Aaron, and Aaron means the gathering place of the testimony, which is basically what the word Ark is for the Ark of the Covenant. Now, inside Aaron, or the Ark of the Covenant, was the two tablets, which represent the word, as well as the manna, which is a supernatural food. Uh, which is also Yahweh's substance or he, uh, uh, the means to sustain us, which is one of the meanings of Samech as well, contained within the Aron. Now, water and the word are synonym. And so 
Aaron represents the pillar of water on the one side of Moses. And I was fascinated when I discovered that the name Hur or Hur, which is Chet Vav Resh, is coming from the word, uh, also called Hur, that means white, pure, cleansing, and shining power of fire. So now we have the pillar of water and the pillar of fire represented by Aaron and Hur, exactly the same two pillars that gathered after guided um, as well through the wilderness and also linked to the serpent on the pole that they also had as a sign of salvation, which is linked to the work of Messiah and the feast cycle coming down where the Messiah will come and do work um, within the physical to support us and to uplift us through that force that is great spiritually to elevate us back to the restored state. So all of these things are interlinked together and it's fascinating to see that the, the symbolism beautifully overlays and we see the concepts. Now there's something uh, that I also um, discovered. Um, when you look at the word Samech, Shin Mem Kaf, uh, and this was stimulated by Stefan asking me, so when I write my name, is it the Shin or is it the Samech? Because if you have a, a, a Shin with a dot on the left, you'll see in the picture there, it's expressed as Sin, which is the S sound. And if it's a dot on the right, it's a Sh sound or, or Shin. Now the Sin and the Samech is the same sound. Now they are homophones. Now in Hebrew, if words sound the same or letters sound the same, they rhyme or they are connected and you can interchange them. So in saying this, the word Samech, Shin Mem Kaf, we can exchange the Samech with a Sin, with a dot on the left, and basically get the same sound of the word Samech, um, writing it with a Shin rather than a Samech. Now, when you take this word Samech and you spin it, because Samech is a rotating force field, as I described through these pillars, and that's the picture on the bottom, with the cuff in the middle, the mem spinning around the cuff, and the shin spinning around the mem and the cuff, you get the two pillars, but they are inside one another. The pillar of cloud is inside the pillar of fire. And the cuff is in the middle or the place of shalom. Now, cuff, as we learned previously, it's a large cuff or the cuffs of feet means collective hand. And it represents the body of Messiah or the people of Yahweh. So the protection of Yahweh's people might be where the two pillars um, became one pillar where the people of Israel was right in the middle of Shalom, protected by the cloud of, of the pillar of water, and outside of that protected by the pillar of fire. And that was the event where the Egyptians um, pursued Israel. And just before they crossed the Red Sea, the pillars came in between um, Israel and the Egyptians. And I believe that this might be an option where the pillars surrounded the children of Israel and Pharaoh and his men could not come close, not from either side. Now, this idea is also supported in the, the, the verse or the, the passage in Zechariah 14, where it talks about the thousand year period where Satan is bound. And after a thousand years, he's released. And once he's released, the evil people that exist on the earth during a thousand years went up to Jerusalem or will go up to Jerusalem to surround the city in order to destroy the people inside the city. And the people inside the city are representing the righteous people, just like the cuffs of feet or the collective hand or the people of Yahweh. Now, then you read on, you see that the fire came down from heaven and devoured the people around the city. Now, if the fire is in the form of a cylindrical force of fire turning around like a fire tornado, it will scorch and destroy the people all around 
but the people inside will be in the eye of this turning force where the shalom is and the protection is. And there might even be a pillar of water protecting them against the fire that's coming down. So that's just something that I've thought about that might be um, the way the pillar of cloud and fire protected Yahweh's people. And it's also um, found in nature. So that was something I found fascinating as a, as a, as a thought. Right, the next concept um, is basically what the sages believe, what Samech is. They say Samech is said to be an endless and ever ascending spiral of Yahweh's glory in the universe, spiraling down from the spiritual into the physical. So in, in, in looking at that picture, that gives us an idea of how the glory of Yahweh that is unmeasurable is just rotating and spinning down in this turning force right down into the physical to um, transfer his glory from the spiritual into the physical. And inside that spinning force is the elevation force, which is also seen in science and nature, that can uplift. And that's the way we are lifted up through the power of the spiritual force that comes from Yahweh, which is represented by the Samech. So that's a fascinating concept to think about in the backdrop of the examples we just looked at. Now, Samech and the Mem look similar, the Mem Sufit or the closed Mem, they look similar, except for the fact that the Mem has got a little sharp edge to the right and the Samech's got a rounded edge. Now, what they say is that when you use the Mem over and over again, it will wear out that little sharp edge and become rounded and become a samech. So if you take a mem which represents the word and you take it through a cycle that we know is a Torah cycle and you go through it over and over and over again, it starts to wear off that little sharp edge and become a samech. And what we just learned from the samech is that this samech has got the power to elevate so we see the activation of this force that can elevate, that's rotating down from the presence of Yahweh, is you engage with that force by engaging through or, or with his word. And you engage with his word on a cyclical way, through repetition, studying his word over and over again, and that you bring that force field into your life that will strip you first from anything that is not of him. And a lot of people can uh, um, uh, confirm this. Once you become a believer in Yeshua, the hell breaks loose. Things go wrong and it just feels like the devil is angry at me and everything is, is against me. It's basically just that force field of Yahweh that's now being released in your life and you are start to walk through that turning force, trying to get to the shalom part that's on the inside, and that strips away everything. And that's where the turning word of Yahweh just cleanses and cleanses and wash away and strip and prune and uh, uh, cleanse you and make you more like him until you reach that center part where there's shalom and then you experience that upliftment force that will elevate you um, through the power of the Samech. So that's a beautiful picture of the spiritual forces at work and how do we activate those forces in our lives through um, getting the word into our lives, studying the word and applying that word into our lives. Now what's also interesting about the rotating mem or the cycles um, that we um, expose ourselves to, any cycle or any habit that forms in your life if it's based on the word, it is basically a tradition. If it's based on man's own ideas, it is man-made tradition. So tradition in itself is not wrong. It's the source of the tradition or the cycle you expose yourself to, whether the source is from Yahweh or whether the source is from man. We need that tradition. We need the right habits in your life. It's just like getting up in the morning, wash your face, brush your teeth. There's nothing wrong with that tradition. It actually helps you to be healthy and to have good, healthy teeth. 
um, in the same way, applying the word and having the right traditions or the right habits is not bad in itself. So the word tradition is not a bad word. It's the source behind it or what feeds that tradition that makes it good or bad. Now, if you have a, a lot of people within a community or within an assembly that do the same traditions, that is called a religion. Now, everybody does the same thing. A religion in itself is not bad, but it's, if it's built upon man-made traditions, that is wrong. We need to build it upon Yahweh's traditions and Yahweh's rotating force field of his word in our lives to make our religion pure. And that is basically what Paul also um, was trying to explain to us in the New Testament. You know, the um, next slide, I've got a beautiful picture there with some mathematics in there. Now, this is what I explained with um, the concept of the patterns that exist specifically within the pyramids and the ratios and the numbers and the Fibonacci numbers and everything that was in there. That's universal, timeless, and it goes across any language or any culture. You know, the Samech has got the same attributes. Now, looking at a sequence of things that make up patterns or that make up a symbol or a sign, that word is called Sida. Now, Sida starts with a Samech, it's Samech Talat Resh, and Sida is also the word that we find in the Feast of Pesach or Passover, where there's a Passover Sida. Now, Sida means just a certain sequence or a certain order of events or of things or of actions. So there's nothing wrong with having a sequence or an order of things. Um, it is the application of that. But what we learned from the Samech, and because Sida has got a Samech in it, and we learned that Samech is a rotating cycle, we know that the sequence and the order of things from a Hebraic perspective are always cyclical. They never learn here. So when we grow up in a Western culture, we think time is linear, but the Hebrew mind says, no, time is cyclical. It's, it's, it's going in a circle. So you go from one cycle to another cycle to another cycle. So the concept of time in a cycle where it repeats, when it starts, it goes through, and when it ends, it starts again. That's the concept of, of uh, eternity. Now, it's explained and expressed through um, other religions as a serpent biting its own tail. And that's exactly the symbol of eternal life. And what they actually depicted is the concept of the Samech. So they actually borrowed from Yahweh and from the meaning of the Samech, interpreted it into a serpent, which is also one of the symbols found within um, the symbolism within scripture. And that's why the pharaohs and, and all of those people have the sign of the serpent as a symbol of eternal life. And they spend a lot of time to build these tombs and things to elevate them to the higher life or to the next cycle. Because they know when this cycle ends, when you die, a new cycle starts. Because time will never stop because it's cyclical. So this concept is explained in the Samech and it confirms to us that time, specifically eternity, is cyclical and it keeps on going. And as I explained, if you want to see time from your point of view, it's a rotating uh, cycle throughout time and it makes a spiral. Now, when you look at it on its side, it makes a sine wave. When you look at it from the side, from the top, it's a circle. So, and it's three dimensional, it's a vortex spiral spinning down. So that's what the summit looks like from different point of views and what cedar represents. Now the feast cycle is one of the best examples and the creation cycle is also one of the best examples of these cycles having a certain sequence or order spinning through time and having a purpose. Now the creation cycle had the purpose to create. The feast cycle has the purpose to reveal the work of the Messiah and creating an uplift force that will elevate humanity back unto him. So the work of Messiah is the spinning vortex force 
And inside of it, it automatically creates this uplifting force. And what you have to do, you need to get to the center where the shalom is and where that uplifting feel is. But you have to go through the debris field where you will be cleansed first. And that is what we learn through scripture over and over and over again. And we see it through the symbolism of this summer cycle, which is also the feast cycle and also the cycles that we read on in, in Revelation, where there's seven um, seals, seven trumpets, seven vials. They are cycles of seven rotating through creating force fields that's got a purpose and an uplifting effect when you engage with them. So the whole of humanity will be engaged into these cycles and they will have their purpose and their role to uplift and to remove anything that's not of Yahweh and then to uplift the people that are in line with him and who allowed themselves to be cleansed. So that's a, a very um, profound um, revelation um, as seen through the Samech. Now, if we look at the festivals themselves, it, the first feast is Pesach and the last feast is Sukkot. And both of those words have the uh, letter Samech in them. Pesach is Pei Samech hai, uh, Chet and Sukkot is uh, Samech Vav Kaf Vav Tet. Now, we learned in the past that there are three doorways or three letters that look like doorways. And the Chet is the doorway that were found in Egypt where they painted the blood on the door and it made the letter Chet. So Pesach is the first doorway you enter into. So when you look um, at it from um, left to right, we're in the physical. So we enter from the left. We want to access the right. We have to enter through the doorway of the Chet. And then we, the first object we get then is the Samech, which is the cycle. So Pesach is a means to enter into life, but then to engage into the Samech cycle which is the glory of Yahweh spinning down and uplifting us and cleansing us. Now the Samech is also then connected to the Pei. The Pei means mouth or words that speak to us. And that's where the concept of Shema comes from, is to listen because Yahweh is speaking. So when he speaks to us through his word, that is the cleansing and the uplifting power through the cycles that we see through the symbolism of entering the seven cycles of the feast through Pesach. Now, when we get to the last feast, we see that there's another doorway, which is the Taf. Now, the Taf represents the stake, the cross. It also means the end, and it also means death. So that's doorway into death, or the end of the cycle. And when you enter through the Taf, you'll see that on the other end, there's another Samech. So once we finish the seven cycles of the work of Messiah, there's another one starting again, which is the cycle of the renewed life, the life with him, which will have its cycles in itself. So it will be never ending. And that's why we call it everlasting life or eternity. And we also see it through these cycles. Now, what's interesting about Sukkot, that's plural, it's also expressed as Sukkah, that means tent. Now, Sukkah also have a Samech and a doorway. Now, the doorway in this case is a hay, that means light, and it also means breath or ruach or spirit. Now, when you enter in through that doorway, which has to do with light or truth and his spirit, you access the Samech, and that's the picture I tried to depict here. So, Chet is the, the life that we, we uh, will access, which is eternal life. And you as an individual can only enter and access the power of the Samech to get eternal life if you enter the Hay doorway by yourself. So if people don't have the Hay doorway, have a personal relationship through the Word and the Spirit, um, which is depicted by the Hay, you will not enter this force field um, that will um, bring us into Yahweh's presence. You will then enter through the Taf, which is the doorway that's associated with separation and death as well. So those are the two things. But both of them have a Samech, and then there are two new cycles starting. 
if you read Zechariah 14, it talks about, and after the smoke clears, those who are outside the city will go up to Jerusalem year after year to celebrate the Feast of Sukkot. And if they do not do that, their land will be cursed and there will be no rain. They are outside the city. They are the ones who entered through the Taf. And the ones who entered through the hay, they are inside the city. And that's the symbolism of the Sukkot and the meaning of Sukkot and why those people in the new cycle have to go through the same cycles of cleansing in order to enter into the city. And that's the new cycle symbolized by the Samech um, on Sukkah and as well as the Samech on Sukkot. It will never stop and we will go from one cycle to another into eternity. Whatever the new cycle looks like, we don't know. We've got a glimpse of that in Zechariah 14. Um, putting the word Samech on the menorah pattern, we see that the, the Mem is in the middle. Now, as I said, Samech means uh, to um, lean upon, to take hold of, to bear up, to support, to establish, to lay hold of, to lean, to rest self against, to stand fast and also to sustain. Now, Mem, as we learned in the past, is representative of water and because we consist of water we need water to sustain ourselves without the sustenance of water we will die of thirst but water also has the attribute of carrying or containing food so you need to drink water but you also need to eat the things that are presented to you through the medium of water and that is symbolized uh, by fish so that's why we catch fish because fish is the food, and if you do not eat the food, you will die of hunger. So we need the sustenance of the mem itself and what the mem carries to sustain our lives. And that is also what we need in the spiritual. So we need the word of the water to sustain us, but also the fruits that are found within the word. And that is where the spirit gives it life, where your nature starts to change and you start to bear fruit of the spirit. And that is the food that you, you need to eat to, to be nourished and that you can present to other people to nourish them as well. So that's the meaning of the mem in the middle. Now the samech on the, on the, on the, on the right hand side indicates support and the presence and the glory of Yahweh that comes spiraling down. So you can only access that force or that spiritual uplifting power through accessing it through the mem. So the mem is embedded and entwined with that force field. And there's no way you will access that uplifting force field other than accessing it through Yahweh's word. That's the only means to uh, engage with that uh, field. And the cuff on the end, as I previously said, represent the collective hand of the people of Yahweh who now uh, take hold of his word and now engage with that um, uplifting um, cycles of glory of Yahweh. Um, the word Samech Mem Kaf is, is, is a word that's also pronounced Samak. And that is first found in scripture in Genesis 27. 37. So this is one of the two verses I mentioned where the word Samech, if you write it out, is found in scripture. It is fundamental to the work of the Messiah and the existence of Messiah and the purpose of Messiah. So where this word is found is the story of right after um, Jacob received the blessing of the birthright, Esau came to um, his father Isaac and asked him, what about the birthright? And then um, Isaac said, I already blessed him and Jacob received servants, corn and wine to sustain him. And that's the word samak. Now it was fascinating when I read that. I thought, gee, that's interesting. I have to look at what servants, corn and wine means because that is what we need to be sustained in this life. And that's the blessing that Jacob received in order to carry the birthright. Now the concept of the birthright is basically to carry the seed of the promise of restoration. And that is expressed through Messiah as revealed um, 
uh, through Paul's writings. Now, the three things he needed to sustain himself is first of all, servant. That's the word ebet. Now, ebet means servant, but it also means work and worshiper. So that in itself uh, explained to us that we need to worship Yahweh in order to receive this sustenance from him as found within the Samech and what we previously um, uh, discussed when we looked at the, me the meaning of the Mem within the word Samech. The second word that he found, or the second um, uh, thing that he found was corn. Now corn is the word Dagan. It comes from the word daga, that means to increase or to multiply. And that is part of the promise made to Abraham. He will become a father of many. So that corn is basically a, a expression of that or sign of or symbol of that. And the third one is wine. That's the word terosh. And when I saw the word terosh, immediately it jumped up at me. I saw the tough and I saw the, the rosh or the resh. Um, that means head or leader. And the leader on the cross with the yod, the yod means anointed leader on the cross. And that's symbolic of Yeshua who had to die for us. Hence the symbolism of wine being the blood. The wine is expressed or symbol, a symbol of the anointed leader on the stake. And his blood was shed for us. So there we get the, the concept of what the purpose of Masiach is and what we need to receive as sustenance to support us in this life. But not only support us, but the supporting power of the Samech that will ultimately elevate us. Now, if you take these three on a worldly or secular level, it translates into power, sex, and money. That's the perversion of these three things that was supposed to be a blessing to Jacob and what is perverted by man. So servant or the concept of worshiper is currently perverted by we either want to worship something or someone which is outside of us or we want to um, be worship, worshiping ourselves. We put ourselves on a little pedestal and the worst form of that is that we want other people to worship us. So those are the three levels of power or that concept of the servant that's being perverted. The increase or to multiply is basically perverted through sex and uh, uh, making um, sex uh, a bad connotation by defiling it through sinful engagement, not within the confines of marriage. Um, and the third one, the wine, um, also means inheritance. So inheritance is normally linked to uh, money that you inherit, and hence the concept of uh, money. So power, sex, and money is the perversion of Jacob's blessing that we need actually to be sustained in this life. Um, the next verse is also fundamental to the concept of uh, the Messiah. Uh, Samak is also found in Exodus 29, specifically verse 15, where it talks about Aaron and his sons who laid their hands upon the sacrificial ram, which was sacrificed as a burnt offering. And then I thought, if Samak is linked to Samek, Samech, then the ram is also supporting that. So let's look at what ram means. So ram is the word ayil. And when I saw the word ayil, I immediately saw the yod there with the other flamet, which makes the word el. And yod, again, is the anointing transferred or the anointed Elohim. So if you study um, the work of Mike Heiser, he explains uh, the counsel of Yahweh which is called Elohim. That's why Elohim is plural. So Elohim consists of himself and all his angels and every spiritual being that supports his creation and his kingdom. They are called Elohim. And they're, they're also parts of them who are his council members with whom he, he sit and, and, and make decisions regarding um, his creation. 
and there are verses in the in the scripture to confirm that. So I encourage you to to watch my Kaiser's um, teaching on that. So the Elohim now has an anointed L or a superior Elohim among the council. And that is the concept of the Masiach, the anointed one among the Elohim. So he is lifted up and elevated above the other Elohim. And what's interesting is that the word Ayil means lintel, the top of a doorway. Now that was a very interesting connection. And I think that's why Yeshua said that I am the door, I am the way, because he keeps the doorway open so we can access the Father. And that is why he is the anointed one that needs to be lifted up because he's the lintel. And if you overlay um, this, the, the picture of Moses, Aaron and her, he held up his staff and his staff is basically the Levi Tanin, which is the concept of the superior serpent that consumed the other serpents, which linked to Masiach. So, the anointed L is Masiach, linked to um, Levi Tanin, and linked to the ram, the sacrificial animal, which was found after Abraham offered up Isaac, where the angel stopped Abraham and said, don't do harm to your son. Look, there's a ram stuck in the thorn bush. And that connotation of the Messiah or the anointed Elohim who will be the sacrificial lamb, which is linked to the previous verse where the wine is the blood of the anointed leader or resh, which will be on a tuff or a stake. So connecting all of that, we get the beautiful picture of the Messiah and who he is. And the purpose for all of those things that he's doing is to keep the doorway open. All we have to do is lift him up. Now the pillars of upliftment is also found within the symbolism of Aaron and her uplifting Moses' arms. That's the word amuna or faith. So we need to lift up his name above all names. And if he is lifted up like that lintel or the ram or the anointed Elohim, that will keep the doorway open so that his summer power can come down and lift you up as you engage. So that's the doorway prior to entering into the presence of the Father is the doorway that's kept open by the anointed Elohim or the sacrificial ram or the anointed one that's been offered up for us and his blood that paid for that. So all of that in relation to one another. So it's not only the Samech force power that uplifts. If that doorway is not open, that force power cannot carry us into the presence of Yahweh. We need both. And that's why faith in Yeshua, the Messiah, is so important. So if people talk Yeshua down as only a man, the doorway will not be open. Even though they engage with the Torah and the cycles and they grow up, they will not enter into the Father's presence. They will be outside the city and have to go through the cycles again. They will not be the bride. They will be the guests outside if they don't acknowledge the doorway and keep it open through faith in Yeshua the Messiah. So that's a beautiful picture through those two verses in relation to the Samech. So when you hear the word Samech or you see the, the letter Samech somewhere, all of these things just jump up and connects to everything specifically regarding the work of the Messiah, the, the meaning of the blood of Messiah, him being the door and this powerful force that comes down that uplifts us and how we engage in the word and access that power and that word is also Yeshua the word who became flesh and dwell among us so everything is connected to him and seen through the Samech. Now this is the, the slide which I briefly touched on so the Gematria of 120 um, it connects to the word Kesil which is a sign of Orion and I thought I want to just investigate this a bit more and then I found the pyramids and the alignment of the pyramids with Orion. And when I've looked at where this word Kassil is first found in scripture, and specifically the root word Kassal, 
I was actually astounded because it means silly, foolish, and stupid. Now, the pyramids are one of the most spectacular, magnificent structures ever constructed by um, physical beings. I don't even know if it's the, the, the watchers, the Nephilim, or humans who did it. But it's spectacular and it's so supernaturally constructed with mathematics and ratios and golden ratios and, and all those things. But in Yahweh's eyes, if you read Job 9.9, 9, it talks about that Yahweh is far above all the constellations, including Orion and the magnificence of Orion. Now, what the Egyptians believed was they actually had a little portal within that main pyramid that pointed to Orion and they believe that Orion was the door or the gateway into the next cycle of eternal life. And we just saw previously that Yeshua is the doorway. So Orion is not the doorway, that's stupid, foolish and silly. If you think about it, if we just look at the meaning of these numbers. So that just give us also the idea that we think through science and our smartest people and physicists, we are so wonderful in even constructing the pyramids. We are superior beings, but we're actually stupid and silly in the eyes of Yahweh compared to him and his creation. He's far above Orion, the pyramids, and whatever we can dream up. So that was just something interesting. Now, looking at the Samech, um, basic meaning, and also seen in Psalm 145.14, we see the same um, things we already discussed explained here it says Yahweh upholds with the word Samech all who fall and lifts up all who are brought down or bow down so that uplifting force we see that but there's a condition to it those who are humble who are bowed down they will be lifted up so accessing the word is a sign of humility submitted to the word is the only means to access this uplifting power of the Samech. Now fall, those who fall, fall is the word nafal, and it means to be cast down, to be inferior, to fall away or to be lost. And that's why Yeshua said, I do not come for the sheep, I come for the lost, those who have fallen, who have fallen away. So this force, uplifting force of healing and salvation, is designed for those who are sinners, who are in the world. And that's why we can't look down on sinners. Because Yahweh designed this power of the Samech to uplift them. So you were also once a sinner, and were trotting down and were lost. And because of his power, he now uplifts you. And in consultation with Letty, when I discussed this with her, she asked me a few very difficult questions as usual. And I just realized that within science, you have the two opposing uh, depots or the two uh, aspects of any entity that's the furthest away from each other. For example, light and darkness heat and cold, all the opposites exist. And it's the nature or the attributes of the one with the highest energy will always influence the one with the lowest energy. So we know that Yahweh is the brightest light, is the warmest fire, is everything to the extreme of the highest form of energy. And that energy can't help itself to heat up things that's cold, to drive out darkness. It's not something that he decides to do. It's something that he just does because he is that. So looking at creation, when he saw everything is dark and void and chaos, it's not that he said, oh, I'm going to create. It's his essence that just flowed as energy. To consume those voids of darkness and just give it life. So this spinning vortex of his presence is coming down looking for every form of darkness, 
every form of something that's the furthest removed from him just to flow to them and consume that emptiness and fill it with himself and uplift it. That's his nature. That's why he wants to save everybody because that is who he is. It is in his nature, in his essence, because he's the highest form of anything that exists and it will naturally, scientifically, always influence or change something of lower entity or nature or power. That's just his nature. So that was also just an interesting thought. Now, Samech exists because of this fallen nature. As I said, Yahweh is the, the pure form, the highest form of energy. And this energy will automatically start to flow and influence anything lower than itself, automatically. And if we refuse to take part of that, um, we will not be elevated. But eventually, through multiple cycles, I believe Yahweh will gradually purify everything within his creation because that's his nature. He will not stop lifting up the fallen away and the lost. So, but that's for another topic later on. But that's just based on his nature. Um, the mem with Nisamech, as I said, is what we need to engage in order to engage this uplifting force for us to be lifted up as humanity. And that is found within the cycles of his word, the cycle of his festivals, and the nature of this turning force will strip away anything. So there will be cleansing um, as part of that process. And we'll also see when we look at the Gematria of 120, all the words that will support that thought as well. Um, the next verse, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, they say in large, Samech. And the verse says, now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. So this is the final word. It is final. There's nothing else to be said other than this. Fear Elohim. Keep his commandments. For this is the duty of all mankind. That is the bottom line. Respect and fear Elohim. Because he is the highest entity that exists far above all other entities, powers, energies, whatever you want to call it. The universe is beyond that. Keep his commandments. That's the word. His medium through which he provides sustenance, also represented by the Samech and the Mem. And this is our duty. Now, what's interesting, if you look at that word, which got the enlarged Samech, it's the word Sof. Samech. Vav pay. And Sof has got an enlarged pay or a pay to feet. Now, as Kaf is a, a collective hand, so pay is a collective mouth. So when we collectively proclaim his name, that is the final duty of all mankind. And it says in scripture, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that he is the Lord. He is the master. And that is the duty of all mankind in relation to his commandments and in relation to uplifting him far above all is the highest form of respect or fear that we can have for him. And every man, every human, every living creature within the spiritual and the physical realm will acknowledge Yahweh because that's their duty. And because of his nature, it will eventually happen that everybody will um, proclaim that. Looking at the commentary of 120, now this is interesting. Everything we said is basically summarized through all these words and these meanings. It's actually quite fascinating. First, the first one is uh, that means force or strong force. And that is exactly what the Samech is. It's a rotating force that comes from the presence of Yahweh it's spiraling down into the physical and it's got an uplifting force on the inside that uplift and elevate us back to a unified state from a fallen state back to a restored state. And the next one is Yemeni, that means right or right hand. And it's also symbolic of righteousness or righteous people. 
Uh, next one is yikaha, that means obedience, cleansing, and uh, curing. And that is basically what this debris field, as you try to access the shalom and the center of the eye of the turning force of the, the samech and the presence of Yahweh, that cause you to interact with the mem and that ask obedience of you and that's also what the duty is of all humanity and through accessing that obeying that that will cleanse and purify you the next one is burning that's the turning spiral column of fire um, which is judgment but it's also the best form of purification um, of, of, of uh, cleansing uh, the next one is uh, kamas, which is interesting. It means to store up or to save, but specifically to store in memory. And that's why we study the word and memorize the word so we can remember the word. Even if we don't have the word, we still remember the principles and apply them in our lives. Next one is uh, kanan. That means to support, specifically a tree, a root or a vineyard. And we see the same symbolism in the New Testament as well. The seal we discussed, that's the constellation of Orion. Uh, kasan means to cut, to clip, to trim, or to shear. That's that cleansing, pruning um, uh, work that will take place as you walk through that spinning power of Yahweh accessing his mem on your way to shalom and upliftment. Uh, next one is namal, which is to circumcise, to become clipped, to be circumcised, or to be cut off. And that's also the sign of the covenant under uh, uh, the Abrahamic um, uh, covenant. Uh, Moet, that's the appointed times, also appointed place within an army. Um, Amud means pillar. That's where Amuna comes from, faith. And um, Miklal, um, that means perfection, a thing made perfect and a gorgeous garment that we will be clothed with. And all of these words support what we just discussed um, through the Samech. That, that's uh, quite fascinating. Um, when we look at Samech, which is number 60, it's 10 times 6. 6 is man. So I just wanted to find out what number 10 means. So Gematria of 10 is uh, Goba, that means height, uh, exaltation, to be high, to be exalted, and that's that uplifting force. And it's also expressed in Da'a, that means fast flying bird of prey, which is typically an eagle. Um, that means to fly swiftly and to dart through the air. Uh, bedat, that means solitary, to be alone um, and to be set apart. Um, ohad, that means united or unified. And that's also the concept of Echad becoming one with Yahweh again. And that also links to the next word, which is Chobe, that means bosom, which is the bosom of Abraham and also the bosom of the Father. And then the last one, At, which is gentleness and softness. And that's basically entering into his presence and his protection. Now, in conclusion, um, as we saw the Samech, the, the, the thing that stood out the most for me was the concept of the Messiah that's revealed through the scriptures, um, specifically regarding the birthright, carrying the seed, which is the concept of Messiah. Also the verse that links to the Ram, which is the anointed Elohim. Um, the things that were given to uh, Jacob as sustenance or to support, uh, to, um, support him was specifically wine as well, which is linked to the anointed leader or head on a stake, which linked to the wine or the blood. And all those things give us the idea of Ayel, which is the anointed Elohim, which is the lintel that, that keeps the doorway open. But you need to activate that doorway also through faith, and he will keep the lintel or the top of the doorway open so that his um, presence and his uplifting power can elevate you into the presence and the bosom of the Father. The other thing that was fascinating was the concept of the spinning force that's seen in nature as well. And 
that the word, which is a medium, can just be static. You need a force to bring it to you in a way, and that's what the Samech is. And that was um, also very, very um, uplifting to, to discover that. And then, of course, the concept of cycles, which are all the cycles we engage with. And when you engage with these cycles, you also access the uplifting power and the cleansing um, power of uh, the Samech, power of Yahweh's presence coming into our existence. And also the concept of eternity and eternal life. And also what we saw through Pesach, entering through the gate of the Chet, and then entering through the gate of the Hay um, into Sukkah, which access the next cycle, or the elevated life cycle, which is the next level, as described in Zechariah 14. So that basically concludes our study. The last four slides are basically just a recap on the Nun, which supports what we um, basically discuss specifically regarding the serpent. Um, so is there any questions or comments or things you want to just um, discuss or add? Hello, Philip. Hello, Philip. Hello, how are you? Excellent, how are you? Good. Um, Samek, is it related to the prophet Samuel? Say again. No. The, the, the word Samek, is it related to the name Samuel, the prophet Samuel? Same first three letters. Yeah, if it's written, if it's spelled with the Samek, it's definitely related. I haven't checked that one, but I believe it is, yep. Um, uh, you're where you talk about uh, the Samek or 60 is connected to the priestly blessing found in number six that also corresponds with the first Peter 2 9 where he calls us a, a royal priesthood. Yep, um, so we get the same blessing through that as well. Um, The, uh, talk, you're talking about the, the whirlwind and the tornado, uh, the uplifting. That's where we, uh, <clears throat> that's the, uh, how we can uh, fly. That's when they were uh, the early pioneers of uh, flight. They discovered that the, um, uh, that the uh, air pressure has, a, has an upward force. And so they, uh, they, are, they are able to um, um, engineer uh, airplanes to uh, to fly. So um, it's because of that concept that you described that enables us to fly today. Yeah. Um, uh, the concept of Hebrew time being cyclical, I found that very interesting. Um, and you compare that to uh, academia and uh, science and uh, astronomy and astrophysics and all science. Uh, this is why science is all screwed up today and science, scientists have to come up with all sorts of crazy ideas to explain why, uh, all sorts of crazy ideas through their perverted minds to explain why we see uh, the universe the way it is. It's because they have a linear concept, they're not a cyclical one. You know, they have a, a starting point and a finishing point. They don't. They don't. Um, they don't consider the the Hebrew, uh, the Greek. It doesn't it doesn't line up with the Hebrew. That's why um, they don't understand why the why the universe is like it is, and uh, they have to come up with all their crazy ideas to uh, to get their heads around it. And it still doesn't make any sense. The other thing is too, the cyclical spirals uh, correlates to the helix in in the DNA. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Which is uh, totally uh, many orders of magnitude beyond uh, impossible uh, from a from a from a mathematics point of view, and they still believe it put itself together. Yeah. Um, the uh, concept of the uh, samek meaning to prop up, I found that very interesting. It corresponds to Matthew chapter eleven twenty eight to thirty, where. Yeshua was saying, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will, my, my yoke is easy, and I will support you, effectively, he's saying. So yeah. that he's, he's uh, aligning himself with that as well. I found that very interesting. Yeah. 
and uh, the water having three functions, uh, the cleansing agent, that comes into play with the baptism too, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Symbolism of that, yeah. Um, and the another interesting point you raised with the, uh, the blood uh, being currency. Um, it's talked about in, uh, in Acts chapter 20, uh, Acts 20, 28, and Paul talks about it in Ephesians 1, 14, where we are purchased through his blood. His church and his people are purchased through his blood. So at, 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 at the highest cost, um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's the, the highest price that anyone has had to pay um, on this earth to, uh, to purchase back what has been um, effectively stolen or, or usurped from, from, uh, from a king. So um, it's a very, very uh, um, good concept there. Um, uh, very, very important there that uh, his blood actually purchased us back from slavery effectively. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I found it very interesting how um, Orion means Kassil. Uh, um, the uh, God is, is effectively <laughs> laughing at the signs is that here we are. Um, with all our uh, supposed knowledge, and yet we know, don't even know one percent of the whole, don't even know one percent of everything there is to know, and the scientists think themselves so clever, and yet uh, here we are. The very word itself, in, in, in the root word itself, means means foolishness. Yeah. Uh, uh, and um, I wouldn't even call um, the wisdom of man. I wouldn't even call it wisdom. It's more like a uh, there's a a word. That just, uh, uh, that is the merger of philosophy and foolishness, and the word is full philosophy, which is what the man's wisdom really is. Yeah, philosophy. Yeah. Philosophy. It's a it's a genuine word. It's a merger oh, between. Really? Full, it's a it's a merger of philosophy and foolishness. Okay. Philosophy. Uh, yeah. So that's what that's how I would define describe the the wisdom of man. Um. I think that's all. No, that was uh, the uh, the Ecclesiastes twelve thirteen. Fear Elohim or fear God and keep His commandments. That correlates to First uh, John five three um, and John fifteen ten when uh, Yeshua said, um, "If you love me, keep my commandments." But then also in Revelation fourteen seventeen, where it says, "Fear God and give glory to Him." So, and then it goes on to talk about the um, who made the effectively. Um, quotes uh, um, the fourth commandment. So there again, it's, it's correlating uh, fear in terms of love and keeping his commandments yeah. uh, for, for um, salvation. Okay, all good. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, one more thing too. The uh, 120, uh, obviously correct in its uh, tw um, 12 times um, 10, but the 12 is also three times four. And so the four comes into there. You've, yeah. you said that the Four uh, represents the um, work of the Messiah. So yeah, absolutely, uh, yes. Four comes into it there as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Excellent. <laughs> Anybody else? I I use up all the time too bad. Oh, <laughs> I'll be quick. Um. When oh now I have lost it. When we were uh, you were talking about um, um, the sacrifice, relating it to um, Isaac being offered up um, in the in the um, ancient Aramaic pictographic form, I think is the sun represented as a thorn. Could it be like that's another meat like it's symbolic of a thorn? Yeah, the one of the symbols. I've got a picture there. Yeah. There, um, you can see the pictograph. Looks like a. Oh, yeah. I don't know what. It's a little squiggle with a pointy thing. Mm. So it can also represent a thorn. Yeah, because yeah. Um, then when the ram was caught in the thorny bush, it, his head was caught in the bush. If Yeshua represents the lamb. Yes. When he was on the cross, he had the thorns on his head. On his head, that's yeah, that's that's yeah. a beautiful picture, yeah. yeah. So, uh, any that's more right. comments? 
real, real, real quick comment. They so were saying about the wine and the word to Roche. Yeah. The, the word is actually mentioned in there twice, which sort of signifies the, the intensity of the importance yeah, yeah. of that word. <laughs> Just another thing too, you're talking about the, the upward, the force, and when you, not that one, but there, there's one with like the two donuts. Is that the Taurus field that you were talking? Like, would that be the Taurus field? Yeah. And, yeah. and would that be what be what a black hole might be too? Yes, yes. Yeah, just, yeah, because the earth, a lot of people think that earth is like a Taurus field, don't they? Yeah. Yeah? But, yeah, so all those forces... Um, just like the golden ratio is found in nature, this concept of the spinning vortex or the fields are found throughout nature, in creation, and I think even in, in spiritual concept, concepts um, and those force fields as well. Um, yeah, so it's just part of Yahweh's creation and his nature of doing things and how things work. Uh, so it was fascinating to to get a bit of a glimpse behind the scenes of how the spiritual fields work, so to speak. Um, yeah. And that would be and would and would that also be representative of him saying that he holds everything together by the power of his word? Would that yeah. be yeah. yeah, as they rotate it, it Brings everything into unity, into one. Uh, another thing I found interesting about the cycles, um, of course, we've got the day and the month and the year, but there is no um, astronomical or lunar or solar explanation for the week. Yeah. So that I mean, that's the obvious. That's a, another part of the the cycles. But um, if they're um, from a from a, a non biblical uh, perspective, there shouldn't really be um, uh, even in uh, the French Revolution they try to abolish the week by having a ten day cycle a, a ten day week. Yeah. Yeah. They had to get rid of it because it didn't work. It put it put nature out of whack. Yeah. So um, I mean, there's 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 a stamp of God's um, the Creator's um, authority uh, by having this uh, seven day a week, which correlates with all the other number sevens uh, in Scripture. Um, but there is no, um, you know, the moon, it, it, we don't have the week because of the moon and we don't have the week because of the, 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 the sun. We have the week because of, that's the way, um, the creator, uh, decided to create, I don't know if, if every other world across the universe, um, has the seven day week as well, I'm not, not sure, but, and then we have the, uh, the comets. Uh, so there are plenty of these, uh, cycles, uh, that come through our world, um, so, yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, the number seven is also basically um, symbolic of, of cycles because there's a lot of cycles that are in sevens. And if you just look at the numbering, six, seven, eight, number eight depicts eternity, number six depicts man, and number seven is what you need to pass through to reach eight. And seven is the cycles, which is basically the summit that we just explained and all the things in play in, in relation to that summit. So the number seven is basically also um, linked to, to summit through the cycles. And we need to engage with the cycles in order to be elevated into number eight, which is eternal life or eternity. Um, so I'll just uh, close out in prayer and um, then I will leave you guys and uh, you have a lovely day thank you father for your truth and your word and thank you for just understanding you a bit better and having have a bit of more insight into the symbolism to interpret your word a bit more accurately father help us to implement that to allow your presence to come and through your word just lift us up Help us to also stand fast through the, the brief field of cleansing where you cleanse us, um, where you remove everything that is not from you. Father, help us to stand fast, to always lift you up, 
to faith and to uphold and keep the name of Messiah, the anointed Elohim, um, the anointed leader on the cross, the, the, the Messiah, Yeshua Messiah, to uplift him far above all entities, all rules, all powers, because he is the highest Elohim and he is part of you and he is the only door the only way that leads into your presence and the only way we can come and one with you father we just want to glorify you help us to stand strong against amalek against the flesh and help us just to uphold your word and your truth and be cleansed through your spirit and applying your word to our lives I ask it all in the mighty name of Yeshua Messiah. Amen. 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 Thank you so much.